Hello, and welcome to video two of three for 207's KVK 28. Uh, there are two lessons in this video. You just saw the first, and it is a very important lesson. Um, don't let them kill troops just to kill troops. So basically, if you're in a lose situation, uh, there is nothing wrong with evacuating a building. Um, it's actually smart. Same thing when your stronghold is being attacked. If you're going to lose, there is nothing wrong with bubbling. It is not being a chicken. It is not being a coward. It is actually playing smart. Um, and if you do it strategically, uh, you can actually come out as a winner in some rounds. So you see there, uh, we lost 435,000 troops um, as a group. Uh, we were expecting visitors, but um, yeah, kind of didn't have time. We kind of sat there and talked about it and then just didn't really do anything. So we took the hit. Um, what you see here is a march coming in. And I just thought it was quite interesting um, I noticed this during the event as well, not just when I rewatched the video, but why would you pull before a march just arrives in that tower? Like, I would have sat there an extra five seconds and just killed those troops. So, yeah, not really sure what happened there. Uh, but what you see me doing now is just trying to keep that tower cleared. Uh, and you can see there on the left that we have another visitor, that is Samson, who just arrived, bubbled, and just popped it. So that lets us know that he has a cooldown, which means his only option if Frozen is to port um, or if he had a Mega on him. I don't know if they know the little trick to porting out if you are Frozen because they did not use it last round, um, but they could have learned. So we're not really interested in keeping them here anyways. We kind of want them to go. Uh, so freezing them at this point is not advantageous until we kind of understand what they're up to. So you see here that I am speeding into the throne, tossing my T10s in. I equal them out just a little bit because the intent here is that we are going to be taking tower hits. Uh, so I would rather spread those losses across my three different troop types. Um, I only spent T10s because the throne was otherwise filled with uh, T9, T8, some T7, and minimal layers of everything else. Uh, and we actually had T11s for the first time in this um, event, so that was quite awesome. Congratulations to Slack for that achievement and getting that done before KVK started. Um, so here, just taking a quick look around, seeing everything that's going on. Um, Throne is still getting reinforcements, and it is uh, full, which is good. Um, it's quite a bit of troops, so it's going to take a little bit to take them out. Um, at this point, we're basically just discussing in Discord what we think is going to happen, uh, what we're going to do to counter it. So, like I said, we um, decided that we were going to let them fire on us for eight hours. Uh, we calculated the power loss uh, for four towers hitting us for that length of time and decided that if that was the game that they wanted to play, then that was the game that we would play with them. Because in the end, it would create less losses. Those losses would be spread across uh, all the people who joined us for this event. Um, I actually put an announcement, I don't know if it's in this video, that um, if you're already in the throne, don't add troops. Uh, we just want people who are not currently in the throne to just continuously send marches. If you bounce back, when you get home, just send another march. Um, and that was one of our mistakes that uh, we will correct next time. Um, so what you're seeing here is... Uh, I mean, just explaining to Guardian and 277, aka June, who I will call him from now on in this video, uh, that, yeah, no, we're good. Uh, we have the troops. We're just going to take tower hits. That's the plan. Um, basically, we also said if you want to come over and um, have some fun, you can. Um, and we honestly, at this point, are not sure if they do intend to conquer our throne. 
or if they just intend to drain us of some power. Um, so yeah, still not sure because they always seem to kind of appear for the first couple of hours and then disappear. I don't remember if it was their kill event or not during this event, so that could play into it. Uh, it could just be experience. Uh, working together as a team, they actually have greatly improved um, on their invasion abilities uh, throughout this matchup um, and their tactics and things of that nature. So, um, as I said before, I do wish them the best in their future KVKs. I hope they learned a lot from this match, um, as we did, uh, which you will see here. Uh, so you see, this is why it is called Gollum Throne, is because we really did consistently send troops to the throne the entire time. Um, and just for those who don't know um, and are curious, um, each tower fires every four minutes and vaporizes 1% of the troops contained within, meaning uh, it is spread across all of your troops by tier, by troop type, 1%, and through everyone else who is in there with you. So it is equal power loss, give or take, depending. It's actually equal troop loss <laughs> because people send um, different power of troops. So it's 1% of your total power uh, that is vaporized. You do not get a report. They just are that vaporized. Um, so at this point, we realize 133 is not doing anything with their throne. Um, which leads us to think that, especially as um, this 35, his name is Ryder, joined, um, we were thinking, yep, yeah, they may try to conquer us. I mean, they got a good four people here, big castles. So, you know, of course, toss a few speed hits at them. Uh, only one of them made it. The second one did not. It was just a few seconds too slow. Um, so there was that. And as you can see, yes, Pearls is losing power. Um, I've taken a lot worse. Uh, we have actually taken hits for quite a significant amount of time um, in matches before. Um, and unfortunately for us back then, we did not learn the lesson that we learned this time. And that is when you are in this situation, you do not want to send infantry when restacking the throne. Because what happens is people send a full march. Maybe there's space for a few thousand troops. So the only troops that actually make it into the throne are those first ones. And who is first in line when you don't send siege? Your infantry. So all of that 1% power loss that we had taken for all of those tower hits, uh, we had basically replaced that power with infantry, uh, which is not favorable if you are attempting to retain your throne. Unfortunately for us, we did not realize that very important lesson uh, until the mega rally was upon us. Uh, so what you see here is game is um, mega rallying out this tower. Um, because we are going to give them a little bit of a hassle. We're not going to do something stupid and hit castles and do things that are going to create significant losses for us. But if we have a battle that we can win, we will do it. Uh, before this mega rally, actually, we uh, went ahead and mega that 35 sitting right there and pulled back when uh, Wood sent his uh, Shadow Dragon in and reinforcements. Yeah, no. Definitely did not want to take those losses at all. Um, I do love the way that this looks just because it is so pretty with all of the green lines marching to the throne. Um, I was very, very impressed with 207. Um, um, and at this point, uh, I don't have that chat here in this video, but we were basically taking a vote if you're in the throne. Are we taking this hit, yay or nay? And it was kind of even across the board. Um, like, we kind of wanted to for our pride. We kind of didn't want to because we knew it was going to be a loss. Again, because we realized that uh, all we had was infantry um, and it was just not going to be a win. We discussed potentially pulling people out and speeding other troops in. In the end, it just did not work out in our favor. Um, and we did lose our throne. 
uh, with just over two hours uh, into the event. Um, but, you know, you live and you learn. So next time we will make sure that we are very specific in what we tell people to send uh, when they restack the throne to send um, damage dealers. Uh, perhaps teaming out and you, this group sends damage dealers, this group sends infantry. Um, but yeah, this, this is what happens. Um, and that is a lot of people in this throne, maybe not with significant troops, um, but that was a lot of people, as you can see from this hit here, uh, that created a 780,000 troop loss for 207. So at this point, we're um, probably at 1.5 million, maybe a little bit more, 2 million, give or take, depending. You see there, Slack just took the throne um, and pulled, of course. So, he did have 1.2 million XP from that hit, so it was quite nice. Uh, nice food for a dragon. Um, losses were favorable in regards to that, and that's kind of what we have to do, is the only way to get dragon XP when you have a peaceful kingdom uh, is through KVK um, or spending a lot of money. Yes, there are ways to get it for free and if you grind it out, but it takes a long time. Uh, some people say that, hey, it's not really smart to sacrifice troops for Dragon XP because you can buy it, but I don't have to spend money or buy packs to rebuild my troops. Um, so I am more than happy to rebuild um, up to 20 million every round uh, in the effort to acquire some Dragon XP. Uh, this round they did not um, because it's a defense round. Uh, so I am in a very different role than I would be in an invasion round. Uh, so this is basically the end of this segment. So I will leave you in suspense as to what will happen in the third installment.